Hi everybody and welcome to this new video. My name is Mark Lumerti, Head of Customer Education at Astronomer and I'm super excited because today is the day where Claude 3.7 is released. It's finally out and I'm very excited about that because I don't know about you but I love Claude. I always come back at it. It is really great for, you know, coding tasks and so on. And honestly, I just love it. I don't know how to say that differently. But not only they released Claude 3.7, they also released a new tool which is Claude Code. Actually, it's not a new tool, it's a, an agent. So let's take a look at that. If you go on the Anthropic documentation, you will see the Claude Code overview. And right now, it is in beta as a research preview. So maybe things that you're going to see in that video will change after a few days or weeks. So as for everything in AI, always take a look at the documentation first. Claude Code is interesting because it is an agent coding tool that lives in your terminal. So if you are used to Cursor where you have all of your code, you know, with the different files and so on. I mean, it's an IDE, right? Well, here it is not an IDE. It's actually an agent that lives in your terminal and you will interact with it in order to run some coding tasks. So as you can see here, the agent is able to understand your code base, help you code faster through natural language comments without requiring additional servers or complex setup. And there are some key capabilities, editing files and fixing bugs, answering questions about your code, executing and fixing tests, linting and other commands, as well as searching through Git history, resolving merge conflicts and so on. So what we're going to do is to install Cloud Code, then see if Cloud Code understands my Airflow project. If you don't know what Airflow is, it is an open source data orchestrator. And then we will see if I can create a workflow using Cloud Code directly from the terminal. Let's do it. All right, the first step is to go to your terminal and then run the following command to install Cloud Code. Then I'm going to create an Airflow project, but that could be any projects that you can think of like a front-end project or whatever you have. So let's do that. Let's say YouTube Airflow, then I'm going to that folder and I'm going to create a project. So as you can see right now, it is empty and I can run Astro Dev init. And now if I type ls, I can see some files and folders. So again, that corresponds to a local Airflow environment. So now let's say I know nothing about that project and I want to know more about it. Let's use Cloud Code for that. To use Cloud Code for your project, you just have to type Cloud in your project. And then you have some configuration settings here. So let's go with the light text. And now I'm in Cloud Code. So as you can see here, I need to log in to my Anthropic console account. So let's do that. All right, I'm authenticated. Let's press continue. Now there are some security notes, enter. Some details as well. And do you trust the files in this folder? Yes, I do. So yes, proceed. Okay, so now I can interact with my agent. You have some tips for getting started, like run slash init to create the cloud MD file with some instructions, the slash terminal setup to set up your terminal integration. And then you can ask questions about your code base or to implement changes to your code base. Let's begin by a broad question, like give me an overview of this code base because I know nothing about it. So let's see what the agent does. Okay. So you can see that it is running some tasks. It is actually going through different files and folders. And this is something that you have to remember, right? As it is an agent, this agent is calling different tools in order to understand your code base. And if you want to know what tools Cloud Code has access to, here you have the list of those different tools. For example, in this case, Cloud Code is using the ls tool to list files and directories, the file read tool to read the content of the files, and maybe grep and glob tool. But as you can see, some tools require a permission, for example, the bash tool, because Cloud Code can run bash commands in your terminal, which is pretty powerful. Okay, so the task is completed and you can see that six tools have been used and you have an overview of this code base. So you can imagine that the code base is pretty small, right? I mean, it's just an Airflow project using Astronomer's tooling with an example DAG and some files. Let's see if we can learn more about the DAG. So tell me what tasks the DAG example DAG.py runs. Okay, so here we want to learn more about this data pipeline specifically. And as you can see, it is reading the file. And now we have a summary of what this DAG does. So we have two tasks, as you can see here, 
The first one is get astronauts that fetch his data from the open notify API to get a list of astronauts. And then we have this task, print astronaut craft that uses dynamic task mapping in order to print a message for every astronaut. We also discover that the tasks are connected using the Airflow Taskflow API with print astronaut craft depending on get astronauts. So we know that get astronauts will run first and then print astronaut craft. All right, now we're gonna check if Cloud Code is able to run the project using Docker and the Astro CLI. So run the project using the Astro CLI. And let's see if that works. Okay, so Claude is running the bash command astro dev start. And as you can see, I need to approve that command or not. And remember that this is a tool that requires permissions. So that's why Claude is asking me that question. So let's proceed. And after a few seconds, Airflow is up and running and I can access the Airflow UI on this link. So let's take a look at the UI and it works. Okay, now let's make a typo in the DAC code and see if Claude code is able to fix it for me. Let's remove the S from the default args parameter of the DAG object. Now we are getting a DAG import error, but instead of copying and pasting the error in the terminal, like you will do with the chat, we're gonna tell Claude how to get that error, like what command Claude can use in order to get that error. You can say something like, I'm getting a DAG import error when I run Python DAGs and example DAG.py. Let's see what we got. Okay, so Claude is reading the file. Then it wants to run this command to check Airflow Python imports and environment configuration. So let's proceed. Okay, so as you can see, we got a command non found Python. So now he wants to run Docker PS to list the Docker containers. Claude find out that the issue is in line 35 in the DAG file because we are using default arg singular instead of default args plural. And now it wants to run the following command Docker exec with the Airflow CLI command Airflow DAGs test. This is super smart because right now, not only it has identified the error, but also it knows that it has to run the Airflow CLI command through the Docker container. This is amazing. So yes, we want to proceed. <laughs> and as you can see, it has updated the file with the following fix. This is crazy how it works. So yes, we definitely want to make that edit. And here we go. I fixed the error by changing default arg to default args in your DAG decorator. It's crazy. I mean, as you saw, right, I didn't tell anything else to Claude, but it was smart enough to find out that the Python command does not exist in local. So it has to connect to the Docker containers where Airflow is running. Then it runs the DAG using the test command. And finally, he found this issue and made the fix. Okay, now let's take a look at unit testing. So as you know, in the project, we have test DAG example, which is a file that contains tests in order to verify that our data pipelines follow the same requirements. For example, we want to make sure that every data pipeline has the retries parameter set to two, at least two. In the case of example DAG, we can see that retries is set to three, so that's gonna work. But let's say we want to make sure that every DAG has the catch up parameter set to false. And we're gonna ask Claude Code to add this test in the test DAG example. We can say something like add a test to verify that DAGs have the catch up parameter to false. Hit enter. Let's wait a little bit. All right, so now Claude Code is reading the file, then the tests. And we have this suggestion, which is to add the following test in the file. And you can clearly see that it verifies if the DAG has the catch up parameter to false, then this test will fail with the following message. So let's hit yes. And now we have the test as shown right there. For the last example, we're gonna see if Cloud Code is able to refactor this data pipeline. So as you can see here, there are many things that can be improved. For example, we are using the Python operator instead of the task decorator. We are sharing data using XCOM pool instead of the task free API and so on. So let's take a look at what Cloud Code can suggest us to improve that data pipeline. Let's say something like suggest how to refactor, refactor dag.py with modern Airflow features. So let's see what we get. Okay, it is reading the file and we obtain the following edits. So let's take a look at them. If we scroll up a little bit, we can see that Cloud Code is using the Taskflow API, which is nice. We have the decorators. It also added the typing, which I love that. So we have the DAG decorator here. Then we have some tags as well. The refactor DAG is now using the task decorator instead of the Python operator. We have the typing here, you see, now we know what this task returns. And then we have another task, which is print data. 
again we have the typing and it uses a loop in order to print each individual from the get data task. Then last but not least it defines the task dependencies using the task free API with data get data and then it passes data as a parameter of print data. So this is great, that's exactly what I wanted to change so we can just approve those edits. And just like that, we have successfully improved our data pipeline using the modern Airflow features. And we even have the key modernizations that have been applied to that file. Obviously, this is a small example, but if you are doing that in production, or at least with a bigger project, then you should definitely not refactor your entire data pipeline at once. Instead, try to do it by small testable increments. And then ask Claude why this improvement has been made and make sure that it doesn't break anything. So you should always add a test or at least ask Claude to update the corresponding test to make sure that whatever changes applied, your code won't break. Another cool feature of Claude code is that you can set up a project memory. By hitting the command slash init, that will create a Claude markdown file. Right now it is analyzing the code base in order to create that file and it is searching for different files, reading different files. Then it looks at the project structure and determines any standards. And if we take a look at what it has generated, we have the following guidelines for this specific Airflow project. So some useful commands such as how to run Airflow locally with Astro Dev Start, how to stop Airflow with Astro Dev Stop. Then we have the code style, so the DAG structure, we should definitely use the task for API with the DAG decorator. Then we have the formatting for space indentation and some best practices. So I would say this file is great. If you have some code style preferences or a naming convention that you want to make sure Cloud Code will follow. And if you have some best practices that again, you want to make sure that Cloud Code will apply, this is where you can put that. So this is super powerful, but as you can see, Cloud Code can generate those guidelines automatically just by looking at your code base. But feel free to add whatever you want in there. Okay, that's it for this video. I strongly recommend you to take a look at the documentation of Cloud Code. Remember that this is still in beta, so I'm sure there will be many changes in the coming weeks or month. And if you wonder, should I use Cursor or should I use Cloud Code? In my opinion, I will still stick to uh, Cursor because it is an IDE, but definitely Cloud Code will help you for some coding tasks as well. I'm really looking forward to seeing where this project is gonna be in a few months. Take care, see you for another video.